Hey traders, Rocky here, and in this free recap video, we're going to talk about trade management and the three markets that were on our radar today. When it comes to trades, entries are really what gets so much of the attention, but if you don't manage the trade, you just don't get paid. And this is my favorite time of you know of the trade where the patience pays off and we get the follow through. So let's talk about a handful of trades and where they sit right now. Uh, we're going to start off with Boeing. Boeing's been on my mind and, and, and something we've been talking about in the chat room consistently ever since the initial gap happened back in here. And on that first gap down, we simply took a trade and faded the weakness, which is to say we bought the lows, the gap down low, with a tight stop. Now that's just trading, right? That's just taking advantage of what we think is going to be a gap and fade. The market gaps lower and then moves higher. But the real trade that I was looking for happened today. And the setup for it happened back here on the last trading day of March the 29th and then on April 1st. On both those days we were heading higher into the resistance zone of a downward angling wave with propulsion dots. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. And you can see what we were trying to take advantage of. Now, I did not short Boeing. And, and by the way, why would a futures trading room focus on Boeing? Again, number one weighted stock in the Dow. So what we did is we bought put options. Now, some of you went ahead and bought put options here on the second because you wanted that conservative zone, not the aggressive zone on March 29, but the conservative zone on April 1 and April 2. And that left us sitting around waiting for three days for the kind of follow through that we got finally today. Now this is a news affected stock. And I would typically recommend when we're playing this kind of aggressive trade that we play with puts, that we don't trade the underlying instrument, in this case, the stock. We knew not only was Boeing likely to drag the Dow down on that day that finally it succumbed under the weight of all the different negative news, like what moved it today, the tw on Friday, on Friday after the bell, the market found out that Boeing's going to make approximately 20% fewer 737 maxes. And all the news just starts to weigh down on Boeing. You had a very nice opportunity to liquidate those puts, or at least take profit and scale out. So let's talk about another market. This is now gold. So looking at the daily chart of gold, here's another one where we have patience. And I just really want to emphasize that word because I think a lot of traders by nature are momentum traders. In other words, they want the confirmation of lower lows once they're short. They want the confirmation of higher highs when they're long immediately. And if they don't see it, there's a certain degree of impatience. Now, I'm not a momentum trader by nature. I'm an exhaustion trader, which is to say I'm looking for the market to exhaust. I'm looking for the market to retrace, correct, uh, re a reversion to the mean. Pick whatever phrase you'd like. That's what I'm looking for. In this case, we're in a choppy market and gold is going back and forth within a chop. And we hit, the th we hit this zone for the third time in pretty much as many months. Hit it once in January, hit it once in late February, early March, and then hit it again here in uh, early April. So we've seen just within the last, say, 90 days, a number of hits on this particular level. And that's why we got long and bought. Today, we finally saw that follow through to the upside from that 1286 area. Again, patience, right? We know what makes a trade valid. We hold on until that trade doesn't, um, hold at support, right? As long as it's holding at support, I'm going to continue to look for an opportunity for follow through to the upside. And then this one here is a really good example. This is crude now. Crude is a really good example of the kind of patience we need to not scale out too fast. One of the things that we practice in the room is a much more conservative initial profit target. We don't wait for the, the trade to hit a home run. We look for a single or a double we scale out, we pay ourselves, and we move to a break-even stop. And then we exercise some patience, and we really just let the market do what it's going to do, especially in a trend, especially with propulsion dots, 
especially when we have consistency in the candle colors. As you can see here, the consistency in the green grab. And our long was right here. That was the alert. That was when we uh, got long. So now we have, what, seven days of follow through. We took an initial profit target pretty darn quick. And then we've been just letting the market do what it will ever since, just kind of using sort of a safety net type trailing stop. So I want to talk about the different ways we manage trades. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next update.